So the question of should I desire or should I not desire, I want to see if I can take these two ideas and sew them together into the same cloth. Because on the one hand, Neville's telling us that we should have a burning, consuming desire. And on the other hand, he's telling us not to desire at all. He says, if you're desiring, stop it right now. What would, what would it feel like if you had the fulfillment? And so it's, it'd be quite confusing. And so I want to, I think what needs to, when you read Neville, you have to read him as him speaking to the inner man. And that's where I think this all comes together. It's because you must want to be different. You must want to be in a different reality. You must truly want it. And not just um, slightly, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see if there's going to be a change or not. No, you really want a change. But when I say you, man thinks of this outer man. It's the inner man I'm speaking to. You, the inner man, must want to be different. You must want to be in a different inner world, in a different inner reality. You must want to have a new experience inside. You must want to change yourself inside. But if you could see that all you're changing are the states, not the actual being itself, which is you, you remain the same. You remain the same. Your sense of self remains the same. It's just that the arrangement of the thoughts are different. They're according to a different nature, according to the nature in which you give it. Because thoughts, really, everything inside it comes from the same essence, which is thought. And how we sh sh you know, shape it and mold it is dependent upon us. But we stay the same. But we shape and mold these thoughts to our own liking. But when it comes to these thoughts, we shouldn't view thoughts and then judge them whether they're right or they're wrong. That's what Neville says not to do. Don't judge after good and evil. Don't judge these thoughts and pinpoint one and grab the other one and say, well, let me compare these two. Let me see if I can figure it out. Um, that's not really the point. The point is to find what you want, the burning, consuming desire, and then feel you have it. Feel that you're fulfilled by it, that you no longer, until you no longer desire it. So you really feel like you are experiencing that reality inside. You no longer desire it inside. I understand that physically it might not have manifested yet, but or it hasn't really expressed itself. I don't really like the word manifest, but just because it's can be kind of trendy. But um, the expression of it hasn't unfolded yet. But within yourself, it's already been expressed. It's being expressed. It's being experienced on the inside. Of and it, you can't experience things. Um, at least I can't experience things when, unless they already are so. In my mind, I don't really think about the how. It already is that way. In my mind, I can conjure up what I really want, and then it's already fulfilled. It just takes me to actually change into that reality and to actually feel that that reality is my new arrangement inside. And I live in there. I don't visit it like I would visit um, a vacation. I stay there. And, and I don't judge it because the moment you start judging your thoughts, whether they're good or they're bad, you call into question your own self because if your thought, if you start thinking your thought is evil, you might even think you're evil. You might think that you you are bad instead of the, instead of seeing the arrangement of the thought itself. Um, you're not seeing you aren't your thoughts, right? You are the creator, uh, the the molder, the the potter, as I would say, of the thought. But the thought itself is not you, and so you could you can call, fall into this bad mode where you might be thinking of violence or thinking of just not good thoughts that you want to have. But then on the other hand, if you start going the other way and start thinking of good thoughts, you might start thinking that you're not worthy to have those thoughts. You might think that this, you, you can think the thought, but you can't have the thought. You're worthy enough to think about it, but you're not worthy enough to actually feel like you have it. Because you start thinking the thought is so good, you think it's so grand, and you think it's so much greater than you. Again, not realizing the relationship between you and thought itself on the inside, that you two are separate from each other. In a way, but in another way, it can't really exist without you. Because it's your conception of yourself or your conception of the way you molded the thought. And so when you remove good and evil from the mind and stop judging your thoughts after good and evil, and you start to um, eat from the tree of life as the Bible would say, which is to feel a wish fulfilled, to feel a desire fulfilled so that your heart is not sick. And so, um, you know, the, the, it says that I wound and I heal. And do you trust that? Do you trust that I do both? Because we, we can fall into the, the mindset that we only wound ourselves, but we don't heal. But we do heal. We do both. And so um, instead of 
viewing it from good and evil, you view it from truth and error. And truth in the Bible, when you view things from truth and error, truth is always coupled with love. And so you think about things that you love and that you're thinking truthful things. You're thinking the you're thinking thoughts that are true instead of thinking thoughts that are good or bad. Uh, truth and error is where you start um, feasting upon this tree instead of eating upon good and evil. It's a different way of, again, using the imagination, but it tells us that thinking of good and evil displeases us. It displeases God. And so we start to use our imagination and it displeases us because we, in my opinion, we can't figure that out. I think trying to figure out whether or not certain thoughts are good and evil based upon my limited uh, ideas of what I think good and evil are, I think it's kind of silly and pointless to even debate that in my mind. It's better to go to something you want than it is trying to untangle good and evil. And so uh, back to desire, when you want to desire something, um, remember it's the inner man who is desiring. It's the inner man who wants a new change. It's you. It's you, the inside, who wants a new change inside. You want to see yourself differently. You might want, remember again, if you want other people to see you differently, it's actually you who wants to see you differently because what you want from others is really what you want to give yourself. And you can always grant yourself what you want inside. The way Neville described it was that the inside, you know, he said, I would close my eyes and then imagine so-and-so is complimenting me or so-and-so is congratulating me or or not just so-and-so, just people are um, to, he goes, it's a mirror. It's a mirror, a living mirror is what he called it. And so it's reflecting back to me. It's living, yeah, but it's reflecting back to me my conception of myself. The same way I would walk in front of a mirror and it would reflect to me the outer man, what he does. Well, the inner world is reflected. It's my living mirror. It reflects what I do and what I am. And so the, but what I, my I amness stays the same. It's just the arrangement changes, the mirror changes. I change myself and the mirror inside starts to change. And I want to mold it to my own liking. And you can do that. So you remember to leave the outside world alone entirely. You let it, with all its denials and all its facts, you completely let go and you just change your movement. You move inside. And that's where true movement comes from. As Neville said, I think in one of his lectures, he called the movement of the mind, that all movement truly is within. That we don't move on the outside. We truly move from within and then we move on the outside. And so many, including myself, many of us might visit places inside, but we don't really stay. We don't really commit to them. We're not loyal to this idea of ourselves. We betray it or we go back on it. And we're just doing it to ourselves. But being able to stay in it or dwell in it or feel fulfilled in it um, and understanding that you don't have to judge whether or not that idea of yourself is good or if it's bad and simply just view it as a, it, it's something you love, well, then fulfill it. And you're now feasting upon truth and error instead of good and evil in which you will then question yourself to oblivion and you'll question yourself if you're good or evil. And I don't think there's anything wrong with feeling good or lovely. It's just um, to pick apart thoughts and judge them that way. It's a waste of your time. It's far better to feast upon this new tree of life, this new fruit that actually produces life in you. You start to actually feel fulfilled. And you'll realize that it was never on the outside that I was desiring. It was never on the outside. It was the inside in which I was desiring. It was the inside that I wanted the change. It was the inside that I wanted to be different. It was the inside that I wanted to mirror me back what I desired to be. And so I don't go to anybody inside of me and tell them, hey, tell me what I am. I say, I I make them tell me what I am. They're my mirror. And you could do this for other people. Mirror back to someone else. Congratulate them on their fortune. It's It can be truly harmonious um, and truly beautiful. And I just want to share the, the difference between desiring and not desiring. So you must want a change in reality, but why keep desiring that change in reality inside yourself and actually change it? Actually commit to the change and how you see yourself and don't wait upon another to give it to you. Don't wait. And hesitate inside and be afraid to change it or feel unworthy and make the thought bigger than you. 
and said, remold the thought to your own. Like your thought is like a horse. It's like you want to guide it into the direction you want it to go. Thought is like, it's everything. Thought is really everything in life. But the way you, you thought, thought is like your paintbrushes and your paint and it's all these symbols. It's the same idea. And if you want to uh, change your inner world, you, it, you, it's truly up to you. And if you want to commit to that change, it's up to you. It's really in your hands inside. And it's not in the hands of anybody else. It's not in the hands of anyone else. You, you can discard labels. You can remove the idea of yourself and change it and mold it. But you, the being, stays the same. I'm going to talk more about this. I just wanted to share this in a shorter message, but um, I will expand upon it. Expand upon it in the future. Um, thank you for listening.